I do want to talk about what is going on in the Harris campaign as they are saying, hey, trust us. We're going to get your cost of, of fuel down. We're going to get the cost of groceries down. We're going to stop price gouging. We're going to do all of these things. That's right. And Professor Hutchison, for months they told us, you know, Bidenomics worked. Everything is great. The economy is the best in the world. But then at the same time, Kamala Harris had to give a economic policy speech as the very first thing she rolled out policy-wise for her campaign. So those two things don't square right away of if everything's great, why do you need to unveil new policy? But what was your take? And you're a professor of law and economics. Your expertise, I know we bring you on about many topics regarding the law, but when the economy starts to be the topic of, of conversation, we know we got to go to Professor Hutchison. What was your take when you heard the speech and you're sitting there and like, really? Your top line issue is going to be price fixing and stopping quote, price gouging or gauging, as she said. What, what, what was your takeaway when you thought this is what her big rollout is? Well, first, um, I thought about Javier Millet. Who is Javier Millet? The president of Argentina. And he has said if printing money would end poverty, printing diplomas would end stupidity. Millet's comments explains why prices are simply too high in the United States and why Kamala Harris's economic policies are indeed unworkable and will backfire. So the Biden administration, if you really look at their claims, they falsely claimed that the inflation rate, for instance, was 9% when Biden took office. In reality, the inflation rate was 1.4%, and the inflation rate peaked in June of 2022 at 9.2%. Kamala Harris, for instance, notes that the cost of a loaf of bread is now up 50%, that b ground beef is up 50%, overall food prices are up 20%. So she doesn't seem to understand reality, and she doesn't understand who causes uh, inflation. It's government policy and the Federal Reserve's willingness to print money. So if we take government out of the equation, guess what? Prices are likely to remain flat. That's number one. And then number two, if we return to Trump economic policies, including energy independence, guess what? Prices are likely to fall. So one of the things that we should keep in mind is that Kamala un Harris doesn't understand that her policies would actually worsen things. As a commentator recently pointed out, if you look at Venezuela, if you look at Cuba, if you look at the Soviet Union, what has happened? We've had uh, shortages, and in Venezuela, people have been reduced to eating zoo animals. So I think her policies are a huge mistake, and most left-wing commentators basically understand that. She does not. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. Well, I was going to ask you, because she has been avoiding the press, as we know, but she gave this big speech, and a reporter was able to ask a question as she was boarding her bus, her, her campaign bus. And it's a little bit longer, but I think to do it justice and to get your response, Professor Hutchison, some of the other aspects, there were some child tax credits that she had thrown in there, uh, a cap on, on uh, or a rebate if you have a down payment on your first home. Uh, so let's go ahead and play bite three, and then I want to get Professor Professor Hutchison's take on it. You were unveiled some economic policies last week. Yeah. Can you explain how you're going to pay for those, and can you give us a sense of what other policies you want to unveil going forward? Sure. Well, I mean, you just look at it in terms of what we are talking about, for example, around children and the child tax credit and extending the EITC. That is it's at $6,000 for the first year of a child's life. The return on that investment in terms of what that will do and what it will pay for will be tremendous. We've seen it when we did it in the first year of our administration. We reduced, we reduced child poverty by over 50%. So that's a lot of the work. And then what we're doing in terms of the tax credits, we know that there's a great return on that investment. And when we increase home ownership in America, 
what that means in terms of increasing the tax base, not to mention property tax base, what that does to fund schools. Again, return on investment. I think it's a mistake for any person who talks about public policy to not critically evaluate how you measure the return on investment. When you are strengthening neighborhoods, strengthening communities, and in particular the economy of those communities, and investing in a broad-based economy, everybody benefits, and it pays for itself. When she's talking about these tax credits or these programs, uh, one, to get passed in Congress, it has to uh, be told how it's going to be funded, how it's going to cost other parts of the economy when you start to put these in place. She has no answer for that. Instead says, look to the future. It's going to be great. What are your thoughts? Well, I think she's living in dreamland, and basically she spent too much time in Hollywood. So, for instance, if you focus simply on child credits, uh, if we look at child credits, they cost the Treasury money or funds. And so what she is uh, basically attempting to do is to drive up inflationary spending. So we should expect inflation to rise in the short run. We should then expect the Federal Reserve to do what? To raise interest rates basically crushing home ownership. Simultaneously, she's talking about uh, giving a $25,000 credit to new home buyers. Again, that's inflationary. So she doesn't understand that her policy initiatives will actually drive up the inflationary rate in the United States. And guess what? Under the Biden-Harris administration, not only have they driven up inflation— Uh, approaching almost 10 percent, they have driven down employment of native-born Americans. And so the Biden-Harris regime has basically opened the borders uh, to illegal and legal immigrants, and the employment rate for native-born Americans has actually fallen during the Biden-Harris administration. So at the end of the day, Uh, One of the things that we should note about the Kamala Harris economic plan is everything she proposes will backfire. And it's a mistake. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you breaking that down. We have a lot of comments. People are just curious because a lot of people don't even understand the the very basics. Look, I'm not going to say I know everything about it of just how inflation works, why the prices go up, why they go down, who's in control of that. So it really did hopefully give people a a good baseline. If you want to go back, I encourage you to send that to your friends. Give them an understanding of why you're deciding to even vote the way you're going to vote or, or who you're going to vote for. You're going to vote for Harris. Maybe you, you see that commentary. You go, okay, that's what I'm looking for. But I'm going to encourage you, even if it is seems like meaningless to you, the ACLJ is built on individual donors at a very low level. People that donate $10, $20. I think the average gift is somewhere between $45 and $75. You know, This is not people giving thousands of dollars a month. Collectively, it's amazing. Because you have things like 21,000 ACLJ champions. You have 420,000 people who get to watch this content for free on YouTube alone. Another couple hundred thousand on Rumble. We're able to provide that without a paywall. Why? Because we are supported by you, the ACLJ supporters. And that is why I encourage you to support the work of the ACLJ at ACLJ.org during the Life and Liberty Drive for August. We extended it. That means donations are matched because the people said, hey, I want to keep matching. We're going to keep matching it. ACLJ.org 